Airplanes can feel magical. From the myth of Icarus to the Wright brothers, flight has always been one of humanity's greatest interests. Hi, I'm Levi and today I'm going to try and build a fully functional RC plane from scratch with zero experience. The motivation behind this project was simple. Planes and rockets are cool. Prior to the start of this project, I'd been reading about flight, robotics, and math, and wondered if I can combine all three into one big project. I then met the four main characters in this project. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. The first problem I encountered was the weight of the potential materials of the plane. Wood was too heavy, plastic was too weak, so I went with foam. I shaped the body of the plane with simple styrofoam, inserting wood into the vertical stabilizer to attach it to the fuselage of the plane. Now, next came the shape of the wings. Now, to get the plane into the air, we needed this thing called lift. Lift is the force that opposes the weight of the aircraft and has this fancy looking equation. Lift is dependent on the density, the airspeed, the wing area, and this coefficient, which is based on the aerodynamics of the wing itself. If I want this plane to fly, then I need this lift to be greater than the weight. First step is maximizing that lift coefficient, aka finding the best shape of the wing. A perfectly flat wing doesn't generate much lift as the air just slips by it instead of flowing smoothly to create a pressure difference. So to really generate enough lift for the plane to fly, a curved airfoil shape is needed. I went with the Clark Y airfoil since it was easy, and I needed to turn this into this. I calculated the dimensions of the wings based on the size of the fuselage, and then cut and sanded these bad boys. Now that I had the body of the plane complete, I had to figure out the electronics behind it. Online I read about this super electronic, this board called an Arduino that could do all sorts of stuff, all in simple C++. So I decided I would use Arduino for the hardware in the plane. I wired everything with a breadboard, jumper cables, and Arduino modules like joysticks and an NRF24 radio. Little did I know how messy that would be. I used 3S LiPo batteries to power everything and dealt with a whole series of wiring for the plane. I decided I would use servos, precise motors, to control the elevators and rudder of the plane while using brushless motors for the propellers. Oh yeah, about the propellers. It turns out the plane would weigh just over the maximum weight the thrust of each propeller could handle. So in order to make sure that the lift equation would be greater than the weight, I decided on a dual propeller based system, and after smoking a motor, I figured out how everything would tie together. I decided that all the power would first go to the propellers before being redistributed back to the Arduino and servos to stabilize and steer the plane. Now I actually had to make the electronics do stuff. I started by importing all the libraries I'd need for my Arduino modules and defining the information ports. From there, I made objects for the propellers, servos, radios, and joysticks. I added essential information for communication, added some live debugging in the code, and defined the constants used for the controller's joysticks and the plane's servos. I added continuous analog reading and transmitting to the controller, while adding continuous receiving and writing to the plane. Then, I mapped joystick input to the propellers and servos, and lastly I added a delay and some dead zones for functionality, and finally added necessary setup functions like arming all of the motors. From there, I started testing the plane. It started with testing the propellers, which we'll say didn't go exactly as planned. Turns out gluing them on wasn't the best idea. I decided to reattach each motor to the wing using steel wire with a small piece of wood to distribute the force across the wing so it didn't just rip right through. From there, I started testing the thrust of the plane. Not exactly perfect, but it was better than that. Anyways, from there I used a tape hinge to attach the rudder and elevators to the plane since I only cared about up, down, left, and right movement. For the servos to actually control the movement of the plane, I installed control horns onto each control surface, connecting them with steel wire. With all the essential components of the plane finished, it was time for the first flight test. For the plane to fly, I added a short takeoff function where the propellers spun quickly enough to take off and fly straight before listening back to the flight controller again. It was time. 
Hold on. Stop right there. You see that? The left propeller stopped spinning just as I let go of the plane for takeoff. With only the right propeller spinning, the plane could glide, but the thrust was uneven. So the plane swooped down to its landing. It turns out the thrust of the propeller was so strong it snapped the steel wire before cutting into the wing and stopping. The repair involved reattaching the propeller and then filling in the hole in the wing with foam and packing tape to keep the Clark Y wing shape. Additionally, the left propeller was damaged during the flight, so I replaced it. My theory was that some slack between the wire and the wing allowed the propeller to pull forward and snap the wire. So this time, I pressed out all the extra slack into one point on each wire, meaning the wire was almost entirely flush with the wing, preventing the motors from being able to move. Now, it was time for the second test. So, safe to say, it didn't go exactly as planned. Because the plane sank in the first test, for the second test I decided, why not put the elevators up to the max to help the plane go up? And I wrote to them so that they'd land the plane autonomously after 45 seconds. Unfortunately, I overlooked the fact that planes can loop. If you look closely, the plane started to come back up to complete the loop before it impacted the ground and cracked in half. Because the fuselage cracked in half, practically everything had to be rebuilt and rewired. I was lucky that the wings were unharmed through this flight, as all I had to do was use the wiring sheet I had made for the first plane and rebuild the fuselage. Many measurements for the original fuselage were off, and most of the hinges kind of sucked by this point, so the new plane gave me an opportunity to start from scratch with more accurate measurements and more effective moving parts. New look. For this plane, I decided to add wheels so that I would manually adjust the height of the plane to avoid having this happen again. That meant I would need to use the controller to control it. The old controller was a bit of a mess, so I 3D printed a shell, which was way cleaner and easier to use. This allowed everything to handle much more efficiently, and I adjusted all the constants in my code to be more accurate with the imperfections of the joysticks. Overall, this allowed me to handle the new plane way better than the old one. With all of these improvements, it was time for the third test. Success. Even though it flipped, the plane took off on its own, which was a huge win. Man's age-old dream of flight becomes a reality. My theory was that this plane would perform better on a smoother runway, and that the right propeller was stronger than the left, as had been the case in earlier testing. I tested the propellers alone and made adjustments to do my best to balance them out across all ranges of thrust. Unfortunately, thrust produced by each motor is roughly proportional to the square of the RPMs, and since RPMs increase approximately linearly with the applied voltage or PWM signal, it means that thrust is approximately the square of the applied voltage, making calibration between each motor more difficult. With the plane repaired and several improvements made, I headed to a smoother runway for the final test. Since the plane was relatively unharmed through this test, I decided to do one more test. But a few notes, you can watch the plane get off the ground, which tells us that our airfoil shape is working and the lift produced is greater than the weight of the plane. However, through all of these tests, you can see the plane lifts too sharply upwards and flips shortly after leaving the ground. This is due to the imprecision of the design. You see, the measurements in the plane are approximate and in both models, the electronics in the back of the plane, like the servos and antenna, pull the center of gravity too far back, even with the battery in the front of the plane. Since the center of gravity in the design was off, the plane was destined to flip. Anyways, here's one last test. <laughs> 
You can see that the plane actually flew, but due to the homemade nature of the design, it was unstable and ultimately lost to gravity since it rotated sideways, and without the airfoil to help generate much lift, it was difficult for it to stay airborne. It wasn't perfect, but for these moments, it didn't need to be. It achieved the goal from the outset of this project, to build a working airplane from scratch that could at least take off. All the sketches, broken wires, and broken foam led to these moments. A few seconds of flight, a success for the project. When I started, I just wanted to see if I could make a plane fly. But I ended up learning what it means to build something yourself. To fail, rebuild, and try again and again. Flight was first a story, Icarus, about pushing the limits of reality and safety. And maybe that's the real magic of flight. Not just getting off the ground, but daring to push the limits. <laughs>